Hello everyone and welcome back to another Roblox video and of course we are playing Defenders Depot 2 and I'm basically back with another tips and tricks video. I know what a lifesaver I am, am I right? <laughs> but um anyways, this actually might be my most informative video I've ever made for Defenders Depot so far, so yay. Um so now without any other delays, let us begin. No matter what anyone says, do not pick it. Because as of right now, and possibly even the far far future, the obelisk is the worst rebirth tower to use in general. If you were to pick this as your first rebirth tower, you would just basically make the gameplay a lot harder for yourself, and possibly even more boring considering of how underpowered the obelisk is. If you would like a full review on all of the rebirth towers in the game, I will leave a link down in the description just for every single one of the uh, rebirth towers. But just trust me, don't pick the obelisk at all. It's either Force of Nature or Crystal Enhancer. And honestly, I would really just suggest Force of Nature. I know you might be thinking, why though? Wouldn't it help me with my rebirth process? And while the answer is yes, the price of power-ups and coins is just not worth it considering how low the award is. Besides, getting crates is a much better way to get both of these as crates are obviously free to get. Gems are also really expensive to buy so I also just don't recommend wasting them on one-time things such as coins or power-ups. In the meantime, if the dev ever releases the NPCs that we were promised, I'm pretty sure those NPCs will be using gems as a currency so instead I would recommend saving up for that. Or just buy cosmetics which while they do not add obviously any endgame benefits, you gotta admit some of them look pretty cool. Tesla, it takes up too much space, takes too long to attack, and it does attack 3 units which is kinda nice I guess. It's also really expensive to use and it only attacks air. It would obviously be better to just use Orb of Light. Spike Shooter, since it's supposed to be a corner piece, it has really low range. And while it does have an infinite amount of enemies it can target in a range, the DPS is not that good. Hydro Blaster, similarly to the Tesla situation, it takes longer to attack which means lower DPS. It has similar attack damage to the Laser Blaster which means that it's really not that good and it doesn't attack special enemies so it would just be better to spam Laser Blaster instead since those can attack ghost enemies. Flame Vents and Ice Spikes, both of them are really similar, inferior to the Saw Blades as they are more expensive and obviously in the early rebirths you're not going to want to use this since you're going to need more Saw Blades because of the armored enemies. So what's showing up on the screen right now is a table for each of the tower that you should get and their DPS and stats with different buffs. By the way, the levels over here are actually the levels of the buff, not the tower, since in this table all the towers are actually maxed out, so um, feel free to pause and check the DPS of each of the situations that we have here, since as you can see, having both force, 4 Force of Nature and 4 Crystal Enhancer would result in more damage per second. But something weird that I did notice is that the Flamethrower is different, since it has the Flamethrower, sorry, the Flame Damage, which weirdly enough doesn't get buffed at all, and... If you can't balance it however, then I would just suggest going with 6 force of nature, well more force of nature compared to crystal enhancer since using this table we can see that 6 force of nature and 2 crystal enhancer is better to use than 2 force of nature than 6 crystal enhancers. So this is more of a how to rather than a tip but it's honestly quite helpful as obviously it allowed me to make the spreadsheet you saw earlier at tip 14. So what you basically do is you take the damage, as an example we're going to use a max out crossbow which would be buffed by 3 force of natures and 2 crystal enhancers which has a damage of 44 and a speed of 0.5. What you would do is basically just do some basic math and you're going to take the damage and divide it by the speed which would give you 88 damage per second. And I know what you might be thinking, Chillerax I could just multiply by 2 since there's only 2 0.5 in 1 second. And yes that would be true. But where it does get a bit weirder is with towers with like cannon and infrared which has an attack speed of 5 or 1.25. And honestly yeah it's pretty that's pretty much it. It's honestly quite easy to make um, and do. And if you would like I would recommend making a spreadsheet like I did to keep track of the DPS that you obviously do. 
so again this is more of a how to rather than a tip but i've seen a lot of people ask this so here we go so to upgrade a Rebra tower you will need the same Rebra tower you have in the your, in your inventory so for example if you have a force of nature that you would like to upgrade you need at least two force of natures with one being in your inventory and the other one on the plot when you click the force of nature on the plot the small box icon at the bottom will show you how much force of nature you have in your inventory so if you click upgrade you would consume one force of nature and by the way the upgrades aren't permanent so if you if you would like to have a two level zero force of nature rather than one level one force of nature then you could just put it back in your inventory and you get both of them back for level one you would need two in total for level two you would need four and for level three you would need eight in total So as of right now, aka version 1.12, the only worth it game pass to buy is drumroll please. Fast forward, yeah I know, what a big surprise. <laughs> but anyways, buying fast forward is honestly one of the best investments that you can make in this game since it obviously allows you to be AFK without having to use an auto clicker. And obviously if you have watched my last tips and tricks video, you would know that AFKing is a really good way to get lots of coins when you are doing something else like watching a video. For the price of only 99 Robux, I honestly think it's a very good deal, and I think more people should take advantage of it. So this is more of a tier list rather than a tip, but honestly I really like doing tier lists, so here we go. <laughs> Top tier, coin boost and speed. I know I already praised these two in the last tip and tricks video, but honestly coin boost and speed is just a really good like power up in general. The speed provides a higher DPS which means total um, higher faster stage clear and the coin boost will obviously benefit from the fast stage clear. Not to mention that both of these power ups last for 10 minutes so that's even better compared to the Defender's Depot 1 counterpart. Mid tier is Nuke and Slow Mo. Nuke is honestly only good for one thing and one thing only and that's obviously this video right here. Click the top right card if you want to learn more about it as I've already talked about it. And slow on the other hand is just fine I guess. It does help with clearing stages since it does slow the enemies for 10 minutes but I mean, it's honestly not that good compared to the other three that I mentioned. And bottom tier of course is eliminate. Oh boy. One of the biggest disappointments that you get when you open a diamond crate. It's honestly not even that good, not even remotely close. Um, if it if it could kill bosses, I guess it'd be really good and really OP, but it can't. It can only be normal enemies, um, so that's not really that good. It's only a one-time thing, just like the nuke, so I guess that would make sense, but literally look in any of my videos where I show my power-ups and you would see that I use the eliminate the least. I have the most of it. Lastly, it's only useful when a single enemy passes all your towers. Um, if, it, if it's against a horde, it's just a total waste. Honestly, just farm that stage in my opinion and you'd like use less resources. So the way that I figure out things in game like tip number 13 and tip number 14 etc is actually by experimenting like whenever things are not working I try to do new things like getting new towers, more traps, changing the layout of your base a little bit. Of course it's not wrong to follow what people do and do what people say but at the same time Finger figuring out things by yourself is a great way to be a bit more experienced in the game. Recently, I was looking at the other layouts that people have and I was surprised because they were actually quite different from mine. Whether that layout would be better or for worse is something that we could only find out if we experiment ourselves. I know I've mentioned this tip before but I just think that more people need to know about this. According to the magical way to the Discordians, the um, st stage skipping actually works the same way that it did back in Defenders Depot 1. Because if that's true, then it's pretty easy to determine how many stages you would skip following this chart over here. I'm not entirely sure how stage skipping works, but if we were to follow this chart, then we could tell that 4.26 to 6.5 seconds only skips one stage, 2.1 to 4.25 seconds skips two stages, 1 to 2 seconds skips 3 stages, 0.33 to 0.99 seconds skips 4 stages, 0.32 and below skips 5. Um, what I would personally use this for is to figure out if I want to skip a stage or not. Like in wave 194, I already know that I'm going to skip 5 stages and end up in 199, which trust me, you wouldn't like that. Which means that I have to move my missile launcher for a second, then put it back so I can only skip a few stages so I won't have to deal with wave 199. I really hate that way, by the way, if you didn't know. So that'll be it for this video. Honestly, I really like making this video, um, except the voiceover part. 
um, especially tip number 14 it, it did take a lot of time to make but that's even more better <laughs> so anyways as I've mentioned before if you have any other tips for people you would like to share then feel free to do that in the comment section below and honestly if it's a really great tip if, if you would like me to feature in the next video then obviously I'll feature it with the proper credits so <laughs> yeah that'll be it for this video I hope you guys learned something new today and obviously I'll see you guys later see ya